Hey guys, welcome back to G2 Esports Invitation on Class Legends. We have the last match of the day, the eighth match of the day, which is between Tempo Storm Gara and Archon Orange, two of our favorite players from, you know, the last time, right? We have seen them in a lot of tournaments lately. Yeah, we certainly have, and as of course, we all know there's always a bit of added spice added to the pot when a, a Tempo Storm player plays against an Archon player. One of the most uh, storied rivalries throughout Hearthstone's uh, fledgling career as, a, as an eSport. Definitely one of the... Just adds a little element of intrigue, right? A little bit of yeah. little bit of beef, a little bit of drama between the two teams. So always nice to see these these two teams duking out here. But honestly, Gara and Orange, two of the nicest guys in the scene. I'm sure they aren't contributing to any of this drama. They, they're definitely two of the good guys. <laughs> Uh, two people that I've enjoyed hanging out with at, at various events, uh, like uh, DreamHack was, was a great time with both of them, but at this point they're going to have to put their niceties aside and go to war with each other here, and we uh, got confirmation during the break uh, via Orange's Twitter that he is in fact the only player bringing Hunter to this tournament. Wait, that, that's Orange or Gara? I thought it's Orange, yeah. Oh, okay, I thought Gara is actually bringing the Hunter. No, it's going to be Orange with the Hunter. Interesting. So Orange has had a massive amount of success for more than a year, or really, bringing uh, various variations of aggressive Hunters to tournaments. You know, face Hunter, Hybrid Hunter, you know, things things alongside that spectrum. You know, Hunter decks are very much a, a sliding spectrum, and the, the naming conventions are somewhat irrelevant at some point. You know, I've, I've seen people playing, like, 28 face Hunter cards with, like, a Piloted Shredder and a Lower Third. I'm like, oh, it's Hybrid Hunter. Like, no, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just face hunter with a shredder in it like come on but like uh point being uh, orange has a lot of success with with various builds of you know aggressive tempo focused damage focused hunter decks and uh, no surprise that he's favoring that class here and straight away queues up uh you know basically any type of hunter into a zoo deck is, is a match that you're feeling pretty good about uh generally the more aggressive the better though is the situation. are you because that's heavily dependent if you have explosive trap snake trap and bear trap basically if you have freezing trap you're gonna have a bad time but yeah, uh if true. you have other free traps then it might look good glade zuka is amazing in this matchup the same goes for long uh the eagle horn longbow so we'll see yeah obviously the the trap setup as you mentioned is a huge deal also um Things like how, how much face damage you have, whether you're playing Juggler Unleash the Hounds, which we definitely see in this deck. We do see the Juggler. Sometimes King's Elec replaces that in the more mid rangey builds. But yeah, the, the slower Hunter decks with things like Freezing Trap and Savannah High Main are a little bit more exposed to uh, to uh, Zoo decks. But I mean, you always have a Hunter power, Hunter Hero power that kills Warlocks. And Warlocks also have a Warlock Hero power that kills Warlocks. So that lines up quite nicely as the Hunter player. True. True. And. That's an awkward turn because you can't really play the uh, the explosive trap. Nope. It's counterproductive. If you play the nap juggler in this situation, well, if your opponent has a uh, any kind of buff and yeah. there are like a lot of options, because yeah. I still feel like almost every single zoo plays at least one direwolf alpha. It's just such an efficient card in so many matchups, and there's always two abusive surgeons. <laughs> the, to have it by turn three. There's a lot of a lot of stuff that can happen and, and, and during that time, and when you see that your opponent is coining out, um, coining out the haunted creeper on turn one, that usually means that they have a way of buff buffing it. Right. Um, yeah, as you said, Direwolf, Abusive Sergeant, both do the job here. Even his own Knife Juggler is extremely likely to pick up a favorable trade there by popping the creeper. So yeah, the the Knife Juggler was definitely played more out of optimism than it was expectation, and he does get punished for it, but yeah. the Shredder is a, is a nice resilient minion on this board here. Especially if he gets a Melhouse Mana Storm from it. <laughs> right. We have seen uh, one Totem Golem and one Millhouse come out of Shredders so far already today, both uh, for the same player against the same player. I can't exactly remember which match that was in, but... Yeah, it was a bit of a brutal beating from Pilot Shredders. That was RDU versus Crane. That's right, yeah, yeah. It was RDU Shredders, right? But I'm sure that this Pilot Shredder will actually have a Mad Scientist to <laughs> put the salt on the wound. Yeah. So, that would be actually cool to see. Would, yeah. So, Gara has some options here. He can 
try and trade with Power Overwhelming, he can try and trade with Defender of Argus, he can set up the Defender of Argus and just start being aggressive. There's a lot of potential ways to play this turn. Uh, see what he ends up going with here. Will he trade? I guess you, you can, right? He should, do you? Hmm. You can start being aggressive, but then you're being left in a position where your uh, board can be taken away by Knife Juggler into Unleash the Hounds. And right. the first Knife Juggler was kind of used recklessly, mm -hmm. so it might be surplus, right, in the hand. Yep, yeah, definitely. I think the, the consideration of leaving a, a wide, small board like that into Hunter's turn five is, is definitely sets off alarm, be uh, alarm bells as the zoo player. Knife Juggler Unleash, of course, one of the, the best punishes that Hunter can, can have for a zoo player. Uh, we do see Lepanomes in this deck. We have seen the Glaive Zucra in hand for a, a reasonable amount of time and the Explosive Trap in hand. So this definitely does seem to be a sort of hybrid E build of Hunter. Definitely not all out face because of the inclusion of those Piloted Shredders, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of uh, face Hunter style cards definitely in the deck with the with the Glaive Zucras, Lepanomes, etc. Yep, but this is <sighs> this is really tough for 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 Orange. To pull through because Gara has an option to start racing the hunter and will be more efficient at dealing damage than the hunter, especially this turn when he just drops, um, yeah, exactly the PO on the one one trades into the into the the Balto shutter takes advantage of the trades and still has board advantage with the um, Imbigang boss and Voidwalker, mm -hmm. but it's still it's still kind of weak to unleash the hounds just to leave everything. To, to destroy everything apart from the aim gang boss, but I feel like it's still the correct play this turn. Yeah, sure. Other than that, you can just drop aim gang boss and draw, just drop the void walker and trade the one one into the into the um, into the leper gnome, But that's about it. But I don't do not actually uh, favor that. Yeah, so it is interesting it... that he leaves the right. aim gang boss to death. To death, right? right? And it seemed like last turn there was a, a little bit of fear of the the knife juggler unleash the hounds, or at least just an unleash the hounds kind of play. And this this board would get devastated by that same thing, just the free trade for the shredder into the M gang boss, and then any kind of combination of unleash the hounds or even unleash the hounds solo would be completely devastating in this situation. But uh, Orange has no effective tools to trade with here. He's just going to go ahead and push the damage to face with the pilot shredder. Take like out one of the lot. minions with the weapon. Yeah, hero power, start getting the damage in. And suddenly, like, Zoo has just appeared to be ahead in this entire game. And this is just the power of Hunter in the matchup that they can just immediately put so much pressure onto the Zoo with just one turn like this. And now suddenly you're, you're extremely scared about your life total for the rest of the game. Yeah, 17 is not a lot. Nope. Especially if you will tap. Wow. That was a decision to take. that was taken quickly. Once, yeah. I'm guessing why, because you have two Void Walkers mm -hmm. on the board. I mean, in the hand that you can drop. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, it's Paragwarming Sulfire and Worgen Infiltrator is the last card. So all viable options. With the double Doom Guard in hand, that might rule out the Sulfire. So I guess Power Overwhelming. Power Overwhelming is a really nice card to have against Face Hunter because you can use it to uh, force through damage against an Explosive Trap. If they set up a race situation where they just leave your minions at two health and just start going face, it can help to just swing unexpected amounts of damage back at them. So yeah, I like the I like the power overwhelming choice there for sure. I'm kind of surprised that he went to kill the mad scientist this turn, because mm -hmm. as we talked before, there's always a chance that your opponent might draw the trap right. instead, and that will make it kind of awkward. He's also just left a beast in play, which is kind of weird, right? Yeah, exactly. That was the other point. This is how much damage? Uh, that is 11 damage this turn if he uses the kill command. Plus he has the explosive trap yeah. up, plus another explosive trap in hand. So that's enough to kill him next turn. Yep. And that's yeah. about it. That's yeah, the so end of the game because unless... you're not, you, you can't deal 26 damage in one turn. No. So if he drew a uh, Void Caller, he could just play Void Caller and power overwhelming it. That's a potential play that could keep him alive in the game, but no such luck here. Um, Seems like Orange will be taking game one. Yep. And again, like the Zoo just got off to a, a vastly superior start here. We saw the Face Hunter like play out that Knife Juggler and it just immediately yeah. got farbed by the uh, by the Haunted Creeper. But just that one turn where Orange just flipped the switch 
push the Shredder to face for a ton of damage, and that was followed up by the Kill Command, but that decision on the previous turn to leave the Beast alive from Gara has kind of come back to bite him here. Not only that, I, um, I'm, I'm just really surprised by Gara making the decision to life tap twice when he had the cards to play on board, right? Instead of just taking the risk, you know, to 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 get. Ooh, there it is. He's got to go for it. He has to go for it. He needs to get Malganis here. Yeah, That's his only that was chance a good decision. Staying alive. It really was, yeah. And so it's thirty-three percent chance to at least live here. Twenty-five. Uh oh. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a Void Walker as well. No. Nope. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you're totally right. I didn't spot the Void Walker over on the left hand side there. So yeah, pretty low percentage chance that he even got the Malganis, and then on top of that, it's still like not necessarily guaranteed to win the game from that point. So uh -huh. definitely highly unfavored in that situation. But he recognized that he had to tap to at least try and pick up that Void Caller there to True. at least have any sort of chance. But it gave um, the information to Orange that he plays a Malganis, right? Because that that was the only reason to play that um, that PO. On the void, uh, on the void caller. Yeah, and I'm really, really surprised by by how the meta was was being played because there was still one void walker in hand from Gara that wasn't being used mm -hmm. to um, get the advantage to soak some damage. So that that kind of caught me um, by surprise. Right. I mean, generally the way that game is played is that the zoo will just dump their entire hand before they even consider tapping. Um, just you know, try and get maximum tempo onto the board. He was very much limited by what he could do by the fact he had double Doomguard Malganis in hand the whole time. So mm -hmm. I guess his incentive was that he wanted to tap to get one of those Void Callers so that he could start to get value out of his hand, get a Doomguard out onto the board without discarding anything, potentially get Malganis as well. Um, but it just ended up taking too much damage and just a, a couple of decisions there just to leave the IMB Cowl alive instead of the Mad Scientist, for example, uh, ended up costing him activating the Kill Command. So. Yeah, so now Gara probably prepared a second deck that will have better chances against an aggro deck, right? I would say that would be a Rhino Jackson, an example, or right. a maybe even a Handlock, but a Handlock isn't that good against Hunters. So. Yeah, I mean, Handlock with, with Zombie Chows and Farseers and Healbots, maybe it, it's possible, but Reno Lock definitely seems more of a, a reasonable option if you're looking to, to have a uh, shutdown for aggro, which I think if, you know, if your lineup is Zoo plus something, then you need your other deck to be consistent against, you know, face aggro, things like face shaman, face hunter, etc. You need to be able to shut those decks mm -hmm. down. That's a very good point. Like, yeah. I, but I don't think that anyone considered shaman being a pick no. for this tournament. <laughs> no. So maybe you can't really build against a shaman because yeah. that's a waste of space in yeah, any absolutely. deck, right? So you probably just want to build against druids, you want to build against mages, you want to build against paladins, paladins and probably cool. scratch hunter and shaman in general from the raider, raider, right? Yeah, it's very possible. I mean, and that's nothing against face shaman. I think face shaman is a very, very viable deck in the tournament format. The problem with playing shaman in this format is that you have to find a second shaman deck to play, which, uh, yeah, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really exist, I'm afraid, so... Yeah. So there's no change for the deck for Gara. So he sticks to the zoo. It might also be the fact that we talked about um, what was the game between Sivka and uh, and and uh, and Zetalot, right? When he didn't want to switch because that oh, would no, make that him. Oh no, uh, that was Kalento Ties. Kalento Ties, right? Yeah. Because that would make him unfavorable in the fifth game, right? If he yeah. would have switched mm -hmm. because of the counter pick. Yeah, it's interesting. Absolutely. So yeah, it's it's possible that Gara just considers that he has to win a, an unfavored matchup at some point in the series and considers that it might as well be now. Uh, keeps the Flame Imp. There's this weird uh, like cognitive dissonance with Flame Imp where you feel better playing it early than you do playing it, you know, maybe turn five, turn six. The three damage that it does to you is the same amount of damage either way. You're not going to recover it. Mm -hmm. It just feels better to play it on turn one, right? Just to have that three, two on turn one, but... Either way, it's dealing the damage, it's, it's helping the Hunter do the job for him, but you can't really avoid having Flame Imps in Zoo. They're just such a powerful opening in a lot of situations. Usually I'll just mulligan away the Flame Imps if, if I'm not the player to start the game. Okay. Because they feel like, against a Hunter of course, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, because it, they feel just so underwhelming if you, know, if you know that you're facing an aggressive Hunter. The free damage to the face might be just too much, because if it dies to a Mad Scientist, you immediately lose, basically. Yeah, makes sense. 
Same thing with uh, Shielded Minibot, of course, one of the other cards that's really forced Flame Imp out of the meta. Just... Yeah, but at least you know that you're not playing against a deck that has burst options, right? Right, yeah, very true. Um, so yeah, using, using the Owl here for tempo as the Zoo player, Owl is such a powerful card early against Hunter. It's just so effective against their entire early game. But speaking of effective against early game, how's this explosive trap, Lothar? <laughs> it's awesome, but there's an hey! egg. Here we go. All right. So you play the egg attack because the other option you want to do and sometimes that's a viable strategy that you not attack into an explosive trap because you want to force the ed uh the hunter player to play something on the board that you will use your minions as a trade yeah. um in as a trade in for those minions but then you push yourself into a position when your opponent can just drop knife juggle coin unleash the hounds and punish you so so badly that you will probably not recover from it so usually it's better to just attack into uh, um, into the explosive trap, especially if those minions that are that are on the board cannot survive the explosive trap after you play a, a defender of Argus, which is another out. Yeah, for sure. And uh, speaking of defender of Argus, Gara snap picked the Argent Squire there again. He probably would have liked to take the Soulfire in a lot of situations, but having the Doom Guard in his hand already didn't feel like he could take the Soulfire for the double discard effect. So he took the Argent Squire there primarily because it's such a good target for uh, a Defender of Argus buff. But then I like this decision from Gara. The, his his alternative to the Doom Guard that turn was to trade his four four into a four two, just because that's how kind of defensive you have to, how much you have to respect the Hunter as the aggressor mm -hmm, in this mm -hmm. matchup. So I like him just playing the Tempo Doom Guard there, consolidating this huge board that uh, Hunter doesn't really want to be able to interact with. You know, they, they don't want to be quick shotting this stuff. They don't really want to be kill commanding this stuff. They want to be throwing those spells at your face. So any time that you can you know, force the Hunter to, to interact with your board is, is time well spent. But Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds is a decent pick up here. He's going to be able to take decent. up pick up the Doom Guard. You know? <laughs> <It's> I mean, <amazing. laughs> it's not like the most mind-blowing Knife Juggler Unleash the Hounds you've ever seen in your life. Though, yeah, of right? course, but... Yeah. But you have, a, that's like the, the comeback that you want to do. You have board presence. You're most likely your opponent will have to sacrifice the 4 free minion to kill the knife juggler, and he has to kill it. Yeah. Right? Alvin Archer is not bad here. Yeah, Alvin Archer is pretty good. Um, again, the power overwhelming is a consideration just to brace the, the hunter as hard as he possibly can because he is in a pretty advantageous position here. But the Alvin Archer is going to summon two knives with it, essentially, or, or a knife and an arrow. It looks like he's gonna try and take out the knife. Greedy. Wow. I didn't suspect that at all, to be honest. No. The greed. Alright, Arcane Golem. Wait, what is happening here? You're at 11. Your opponent doesn't have cards. He played one Doom Guard, uh -huh. and you s did see. What were the discards? Imp Gang Boss and. Uh, Argent Spire. So, the, that, so there's two POs. So you yep. have four damage, eight, mm. and you have a weapon. You can kill the can kill the one one with a lucky juggle. Hmm. Really? I'm just thinking: is it better to kill command, or is it better just to play the 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 weapon this turn uh, in going all face? Because you might just win if your opponent starts to trade uh, to trade. Because in general, you will be now a player that is being punished uh, by the amount of draws. From the zoo, uh, right? Yeah, I mean it's true. Yeah, I think he was one damage off lethal on the board there, so just about every card in the deck is lethal. Oh, Speaking of lethal, that's pretty close. If he can pick up a power overwhelming, doesn't get it. All right, Imp Gang Boss not quite playable here, but he is just going to go ahead and be the aggressor here, and that I believe is pretty much game. He can deal with the Doom Guard with the double trade, but. Uh, it's a pretty miserable situation to be in here. Does get a Lepidome on board, deals two more damage with the uh, with the hero power. I think you might as well swing at face at this point. Yeah, because you will not use that as a as a trade, right? Right. Um, we well, actually, seen... you might you might be able. Uh, I mean, oh, never mind. That's a game. Because now you will swing one damage to the face. Yep. Here we go. And... Okay. So that's game. So it's one one this time mm. unless no it doesn't unless no i think one quick shot had already been used as well so like quick shot into huffer or arcane golem was his max damage which was 11 so he was one off even in like perfect rng world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. i was just thinking like where the trades needed because he was so unfavored to win when mm -hmm. he trades right 
So if yeah. you deal the damage and just put your opponent in a position when he needs to trade, mm -hmm. he would have been much closer to 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 um, just deal the, the additional damage that he needs to close the game in general, right? Yeah. I mean, I'd have to look back at the board. I think it was one damage off lethal and there was a knife juggler in play. So that's pretty ambitious that that one damage yeah, is going to be found. I mean, but I, like, I can mm -hmm. understand what you're saying is that like you're really far behind. You need to make the ambitious play. Um, but that play from from Orange was kind of ambitious in its own way, where he left a five one arcane golem on board against nothing, hoping that you know the the minions would be a, a little bit of a whiff from from the zoo player. Mm -hmm. um, so you know either way, there's a certain element of, of optimism to it. But um, I guess your way, your level of optimism, if it pays out, you just immediately win the game, which is is pretty nice. So. I mean, I don't disagree with trading and just saying no, that there no. are two two options to play out the the matchup there, yeah. and. It's a personal preference. It's just a matter of taking the risk or not, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, so again, orange. Decent start, Lepinome. And again, ah. Iron Cow. Uh, as, as effective as it is against Hunter, it's almost equally so against Zoo. You can deal nicely with Haunted Creepers, with Nerubian Eggs. It's amazing. I would keep the whole hand from, yeah, from doesn't orange. Yeah, not at all. And the same goes for Gara. His hand is amazing too. I would have keep every single card from both hands. Interesting. Because the, the Void Color will bring so much value in this aggro matchup. Mm -hmm. I will practically be a heal because you trade for a minion and you get a minion for zero mana that will trade another min with another minion, right? So, and if it's Doomguard or Morganis, you probably win the game just by doing that. And uh, Nerubian Egg trades with a minion, gives you a body on board. Yep. Invaluable. But there's the Owl, which will come to the Egg because I'm sure as hell that this will be the turn when you coin out uh, the, the egg. Or maybe not. Well... <laughs> maybe avoid Walker in this situation. Yeah. But there are Glaive Zookas there. Yeah, he has seen double Glaive Zooka. He's seen two, two Glaive Zookas used in the same game, so he's well aware that there's two of them in the deck. So that can definitely be a little bit of a punish for the Void Walker, but um, he has to consider here how much he values getting that 4-4 onto the board quickly, because as we saw in the previous turn, uh, previous game, you don't necessarily have to activate your Nerubian Egg in this matchup. You can just wait for the Explosive Trap to come into play and use that to generate your 4-4 for you. So. Yep. Well, I, like, I think I like the Void, Walk, Void Walker here. It's it's hard to say, because obviously I'm, I'm trying not to be biased by the fact I can see the Owl. But mm -hmm. I think, just like all things considered, I do like the Void Walker here. For that reason, like you don't have to be too worried about generating your Nerubian Egg yourself, because you expect either a Mad Scientist or a Trap to be drawn fairly quickly, especially since Mad Scientist is a card that they're mulliganing for specifically. Um, so it's probably not too far from now that you get to get that 4-4 into play on, on your terms. Uh, to be honest, I would have gone for the Egg anyway. I, I feel like having the advantage mm. of of having the egg and trading in the beginning yeah. of the game when your opponent most likely doesn't have the silence in hand is so advantageous that that can immediately swing the game in your favor. Yeah, but the problem is if there's, a, if there's an owl, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of swinging the game in his favor, that quick shot draw on turn two doesn't seem like a big deal, but it has, it has changed the entire course of this matchup so far. I'm kind of interested why didn't he trade with the with the egg? Because that's four damage, of course. Yeah. But Zoo is known for having the boss, right? So, uh, what would you leave an option to lose a minion? I yeah, I mean, it's hard to sure. say. Maybe it's, maybe it does make sense. Yeah, I mean he 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 had the abusive Sarge in that turn, which I think swayed his um his options to going face. Obviously, the punish is there and most most likely is there from the zoo player. He's probably accepting that that um, buff was going to come down to trade out his board, but wasn't accounting for the knife juggler as well, so he expected to still be in a pretty comfortable position on the board. Interesting. Is he going to go for the trade Mad Scientist Hero Power here, it looks like? Yeah. Uh, if, if he didn't draw the Mad Scientist, we probably would have seen an Explosive Trap turn from, from Orange there, followed by just going face with the Lepinome. Um But having drawn the Mad Scientist, he just gets that minion into play, gets to pull his free secret out of his deck before he draws it. And uh, he's looking in a pretty nice position here. He's a long way ahead in the race. He has Eagle Horn Bow in his hand for a ton more damage, uh, especially mm -hmm. since it's going to be reloaded by all of those traps. 
And uh, the Void Caller is going to come down here, which is now does now have a good target in hand in form of the Doom Guard. Uh, well, let's see what happens here. Good thing that the Dark Peddler isn't a demon. Right. Yeah, I, I had to check that once or twice. It's just kind of the impression you get. It's, oh, it's a Warlock exclusive minion. Like, it's on a purple background. That means it's a demon, right? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you look at it a couple of times. No, no, it's fine. It's not a demon. We're good. Wait, is there a warlock creature that is not a demon? Uh, probably? Anima Golem? Is oh, that... yeah, right. That's a mech. Yeah. Okay. No, there's probably Puzzle a couple, couple more that we're not thinking of. Anyway. Uh, seems like an animal companion turn, or you just want... No, actually, you want to play the weapon. You want to play the weapon and go to the phase with the hero power. Yep. And the Mad Scientist. You deal the maximum damage this turn, which is 7. You put your opponent on the clock on 13. Yeah, 7 and... is so much damage here. Yeah. And then next turn, you have Explosive Trap, or even the turn you you don't... You have additional Explosive Trap, because your opponent might just kill the Mad Scientist. Yeah. There oh. is the Bran, so you can potentially pick up some double value from the Dark Peddler here. Yeah, and which will be like double Voodoo Doctors. Yeah, Voodoo Doctor, uh, Shield Bearer, Void Walker. There's a lot of... Yeah, even Tournament Attendee is a taunt, right? There's there's a lot of one-mana cards that can be at least mildly annoying to Hunter, but um, honestly, he's probably just going to make that play here, not so much for the double Peddler cards, but because he needs to make the proactive play onto the board. May even just be considering whether he needs to Doom Guard here to be able to race in time. Which I guess is a viable consideration as well. If he if he Doom Guards and then uh, trades in the most efficient way possible, he can get 8 damage through to face this turn. Uh, trade with the Void Caller and then at least be threatening uh, 6 more on the following turn or 5 more on the following turn. Could be a consideration. Then he can... Uh, it's hard. It's it's hard to see a way that he can he can win this race from this position, but I do think it begins with playing Doom God. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, that's that's a very good rule, being super aggressive here. Yeah. Unleash is pretty good. Well he has a chance of winning the game if he draws Morgana's next turn. He does. Well he can't well. really trigger the unless yeah. there were a minion from Gara. Right. Eh, sorry, from Orange. Probably Orange would even like to avoid playing a minion. Because then you you put an option for Ooh. oh, that's well so that's nice. more efficient yeah. than more efficient than hero power because it puts four damage on board. Yep. So you basically you miss two damage by not pressing the hero power, but you gain two damage from the the extra dogs here. But you also retain the ball presence of having the one ones in play. And you make a uh, void color. Just you just avoid the death rattle, right? By having the Leo, but that was the only outcome that actually did that. Uh, well, no. If he draws Malganis, for example, here he can still trade the Void Caller into the. Ah, uh, no, because then he won't kill it. I'm thinking no, no, about, like... he, sorry, he can because he can trade into the um into the minion with two attack and then he, he procs the explosive trap. Right, but the problem with that is that he then doesn't kill the Leoc, which doesn't seem like a great idea either. <laughs> yeah, that looks really true. Yeah. Defender of Argus is a pretty nice pickup here. Isn't that the only thing that was helping him survive this turn? I think so. For uh, 10 damage to the face and set up lethal for next turn, right? Because if you kill the Leoc, you only deal 6 damage, so your opponent will be at 12, and then you have for 8, 10 damage on the board, so you're not setting a two turns lethal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. Defender of Argus. My shield. And, I mean, Unleash the Hounds is a little bit scary here, but you probably have to feel like that 4-8 taunt is good enough. Okay, I guess not. So, kill command off the top. No, he won't have enough mana! He doesn't have enough mana! Whoops. Oh! Whoops. One damage or one mana off lethal right now. But the explosive trap helps him. Yes. Yeah, you're right. The play is yeah. Kill command face, hero power face, explosive yeah. trap. Yeah, and that's it. Right. Yeah. Even without the uh, kill command, he would still set up a two ten clock against Gara. Because um, of course, unless he has a Malganis. Whoops, that's not a Malganis. But he can't. I, I really like this because that setups. Um, also, uh, there's no possibility that the opponent can tap it to Malganis, right? Yeah. So. 
Yeah, that's about Interestingly it. Interestingly enough, do you know if he drew Malganis here and then attacked face, does he die or not? Oh, he should die because the damage, the damage is being. Uh, yeah, it struggles yeah. first. Because I had a scenario where I traded a Void Caller into a Lepanone. The Void Caller was played first, which to my mind means the Void Caller's Death Rattle should activate first, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I was at one health, I traded a Void Caller into a Lepanome, and I took the damage from the Lepanome, even though Malganis was summoned onto the board. Which I find really weird, but eh. Well, that depends with which Death Rattle was first played on board, right? Yeah, the Void Caller was played first, so to my mind, the Void Caller should have happened. And yeah, I like, oh yeah, 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 you're correct. I, like, I went back in my VODs to like verify that the Void Caller was played mm -hmm. first, because I was so freaked out about it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I got really tilted about that for a long time, but that's irrelevant. What's important is that Gara has uh, been defeated in this game. Orange goes out to a 2-1 to two. One game lead. And now Gara has to make the decision, does he switch or not? And it doesn't make sense to switch to the Reno Jackson Warlock right now if he has one in, in his arsenal, right? Because he, he is bringing Warlock for a reason, and I'm guessing that the reason is not to bring to Zeus, right? Right. That, that's probably not the correct choice when you, when you have the option to make two decks uh, for the entire tournament, and you will pick the same exactly archetype when Warlock is one of the most versatile class in the entire, in, in the entire game. Absolutely. It wouldn't make any sense, really, to bring two decks of the same archetype. So I would be highly surprised if we didn't have some sort of variation here. But as we said in the previous game, he chose not to switch. So it'll be interesting what line we go down here. And he is just, again, re the Zoo. So all on the line here. Zoo against Face Hunter. Wow, I'm really surprised. What is his second deck? I mean, we'll be... We'll, we'll, we will be, be... Oh my god, it's too late. We'll be <laughs> publishing... Uh, the deck list from each single player after the tournament. Oh, awesome. To see what were the deck choices. And I'm really interested. Oh! Okay. There's a card that he hasn't drawn for four games. <laughs> okay. Well, this might be the reason why he is sticking to the zoo. Yep. Yeah, suddenly things start to make a lot of sense. Or, you know, this, that, that's really unlucky for Gara, to be honest, to play. This is now his fourth game against Zoo. Against, sorry, against Face Hunter, and this is the first time that we've seen that Kezan Mystic get drawn. I'm sure that there will be no explosive trap in this game. <laughs> yeah, very possible. Doomguard as well being drawn every game, which is, is not a terrible thing. Doomguard is often a thing that you do have to just play for tempo on turn five if you're if you're going to be able to race this matchup down. But uh, he hasn't had the most efficient of uh, early game draws here, but Voidwalker into Haunted Creeper is about as good as it gets for shutting down Face Hunter starts. And you see that, that Void Voidwalker, sorry, trading straight up for both of the Lepanomes coined out from, from Orange on turn one. Yep. What do you think about not playing the um, Quick Shot on turn one against the Voidwalker? Because he played two Lepanomes into a single Voidwalker. That was the outcome. Because he had access to both Quick right. Shot and Lepanomes. And he chose two Leper Gnomes instead. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I guess he just doesn't value the, the Leper Gnomes as like a long-term board presence. You know, it'd be better to use the quick shot if you expected the Leper Gnomes to stick around for a long time afterwards. Um, but I guess knowing that, you know, this is Zoo, they have very efficient minions to trade down small, small boards like that. He thought, you know, just get the Leper Gnomes out in play. That way I can deal with the Void Walker while dealing four damage to face from the Death Rattle anyway and just maintain the, the quick shot for a, for a play later on. Mm -hmm. um, so I can, I can kind of get on board with it. Yep. Okay. Well, this is the time you play the egg, right? <laughs> Into the silence. Maybe not. Yeah, no, it looks like he's going to go for the silence here and... This does just open up a trade for the Creeper straight back into the Owl, but he's probably not too sad if that happens. But we're probably just going to see the, the same sort of thing. Now he's going to go Animal Companion here. Never Huffer. Orange Orange has not prayed to the Huffer Gods recently. He's rolling way too many Leox here to be a good Hunter player. Definitely. Yeah. I'm actually running stats of how my Animal Companions are panning out oh, yeah. my, during my stream. Yeah. So far, it's like 12 times Leox. Three times Misha and two times Huffer. <laughs> I'm serious. I have it on VODs and I have the stats on screen. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. Well, if we'd have gone down your uh, Nerubian egg line, then the power overwhelming looks like it may have been a huge swing. Yeah, but there's, the there's a silence anyway. Yeah. Right? If the Nerubian egg had come down, we would have seen the owl come down instead of the animal companions. So the game would have progressed completely differently. But 
Uh, even here, it looks like Power Overwhelming might be a little bit tempting into the Leork, but he's going to go for a little bit, a little bit of a greedier play, a little bit more long-term play here, set up the Nerubian Egg to try and get the value out of Power Overwhelming. And there's the Explosive Trap. Yep. Which will be very interesting in the current scenario. Because of that, Chasm Mystic. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be interested here how early on, okay, very early. I was about to, the end of that sentence was about to be how early on in this matchup does Orange value pressing his hero power over developing minions? And it turns out that even as early as turn four, he's looking to press that button over developing something like a Wargan Infiltrator. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about the turn with um, Knife Juggler, Abusive Sergeant, Attack into Leok? And then cross your fingers. Yes. Yep. Uh, looks like the best option we've got. He can make that same play with the power overwhelming as well. That almost guarantees the board clear. He does have the mana to spare to do that. It's just a matter of whether he values having that power overwhelming to uh, to race hit the hunter. And it looks like he is going to go for the riskier play here. Whoop. Well, this will be important. All right. He's... Time to get it. Yep. And here we go. And now, unless there will be a. Nope. No unmuted hounds. This right. will be crushing for Orange. It will. This He probably feels pretty comfortable with his position yes, right now. This exactly. is a really strong turn. Uh, explosive trap hero power. He can choose to play the Wargan Infiltrator or not into that knife juggler. Probably going to pass it up, is he? I I'll probably will play it because then he pushes his opponent to fill up the board before attacking into the explosive trap yeah right yeah makes sense um but yeah i mean sorry orange there is a little tech card in this deck that you haven't seen yet and that is going to come down and crush your hopes and dreams yep and that's so much damage yeah four six and two doggles <laughs> and yeah i mean apart from but well, that's the second trap but uh, does it change anything? I'm not sure. The Doomguard and PO, how much damage is that? Uh, you will get one juggle. The opponent is at 17. You can. So, you can PO. The I believe, hmm. No, I believe Four, the play is to 13. PO the Dire Wolf. That actually represents you more damage, right? Because you will have two additional two damage from yeah. the Doomguard, right? Yeah, and from the Kezen Mystic that will slide over when the Knife Juggler dies. Mm -hmm. Um, so the play, so you would get six damage from the Dire Wolf. The Kezen would move over to be eleven, and then six from the Doom Guard. That's lethal. Wait, wait, wait. It's lethal. It... Yeah, it's lethal. Okay. Uh, it seems to be lethal the slightly inefficient way. This might end up being the same amount of damage. All oh, right, you get an extra knife this way as well. So yeah, it's. I think it's the same amount of damage either way. So seems fine. Good job. Yep. Well, the Kezen Mystic won the game. Single-handedly. Yeah, pretty much. Not only stealing that explosive trap, but also getting that snipe on the Wargan Infiltrator for the extra BM in the same turn. So that single turn pretty much crushed Orange, and we're getting a little bit of insight now as to why Gara continued to repeatedly queue with this deck, even though yeah. we uh, we were saying it was a, probably an unfavored matchup for him. We did not see that Kezen Mystic get drawn. We saw it get drawn in that game, and you can see night and day the results, being able to steal that explosive trap, which is such a key card in the matchup. Completely agree. I, I think he might even be playing double silences in this deck because he is so teched out, right? Mm, very possible. We have seen Al drawn with very, very high consistency from him as well, so that, that wouldn't mm -hmm. surprise me. Um, so is Orange going to switch deck here? I, I don't think so. Not, Face Hunter no. should be very favorite against Zoo if he has Explosive Trap, but the problem is the Chasm Mystic, right? But for the two, uh, three first games, he avoided to see the Chasm Mystic. Yep. And again, not a bad hand here from Gara's side. He has that Nerubian Egg. He has the Abusive Sergeant, Knife Juggler as well, so it's just be a, a little bit more aggressive onto the board. But uh, looks like the opening here is going to be Coin Nerubian Egg. Yep. And I will see if there will be another Owl, because that seems to be the theme that yeah. we follow each single game. Yeah. That there's a turn two, turn two silence. Nope. Animal. Double Animal Companion isn't bad though, but I think he accepts after seeing the, the coin egg that he is going to lose this minion to a buff this turn, but mm -hmm. still, dealing the 5 damage immediately with the Glaive Zooka is a, is a pretty strong opening here from, from Orange. Definitely true. So Abusive Sergeant will go in, and we'll be looking at a board of a 4-4 and a 2-1 facing down nothing. I, what, like, what is Gara considering right now? There's like, there's no world where you play Knife Juggler here, right? And there's no, no world where no you way. Tap, no so. way. 
What is he possibly considering this turn? It's mana inefficient to play the Abusive Sergeant, but I think it's the underplay. What he might be thinking is about dealing 6 damage to this face. Because you generate the 4 4 anyway. Mm. Is he leaving the one, the, uh, the Abusive Sergeant in hand to play it next turn? Hmm, oh. interesting. Because. Was that. He's playing around. Wow. Oh my god, third half or. Mm, that's Or awesome. Orange has your animal companion RNG, apparently, Lothar. It's yeah, we're sharing the same fate. Yeah. That's the Kazan again! And this might be something that is needed to seal the deal. This is looking rough from Orange. No traps in hand, no scientists in hand just yet, but he is behind on the board, and after that initial five damage that he got in from the Strong Glaive Zucra opening, he really hasn't had anything to do. Um, I guess, yeah. So I suppose his thinking was that his turn three here was uh, Knife Juggler plus Abusive Sergeant, and mm -hmm. Abusive Sergeant throws a knife, whereas Power Overwhelming doesn't. Um, so I guess I can get along with his line. You know, we both said, really, what is there to think about? But actually, when you break it down, keeping the Abusive Sergeant may even have been sensible there. I like the Hunter Kruger here, Power this turn. It makes uh, the Knife Juggler so much more potent next turn. Then it would be just this turn, just let to let it die. The problem is, Gara has the perfect hand. The yeah. Void Caller in the Doom Guard and the Low Tap and the Kazan Mystics are all awesome cards in every single scenario that can be played out by Orange. Whatever we will play by Orange, it gets countered. Yeah, absolutely. You, you called this the perfect hand, and honestly, I'd, I'd struggle to pick cards out of a zoo deck right now that would be an improvement on this hand against Face Hunter. Uh, he's just thinking about how he wants to trade this turn. He is going to limit the beast off the board, but I don't see this four damage going anywhere but to the Hunter's face. Yep, I'm kind of surprised by that, to be honest. Because now we know that there will be a Leok from that animal companion. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I mean, you leave your spider to die right because of that yep. if you went if you go six damage to the face oh misha hey all right we broke the leoc curse um misha's pretty good here he is gonna um you know doom guard will be summoned from this boy caller when it dies so that that misha is going to create a really annoying wall for both of those minions might be considering the implosion this turn seems pretty likely well if you implosion and you attack first with the void caller to get the uh, Doom got out, right? Yeah, I mean, I think he was fine if it rolled four there and he was just able to pick off the, the knife juggler with the with the Void and leave it on the board. I think that would have been totally reasonable. And here we go! The explosive trap is drawn! But it's really not that important. And I mean, it just decreases the amount of damage by three. It yeah. doesn't kill anyone, but it's yeah. the only play you have anyway. So, right. I mean, to be honest, this then is hero power instead of um, instead of explosive trap, I think. Uh, I mean, if you do that, then you're not able to attack with the bow on the following turn. Is the problem because you'll have to wait. Oh yeah, for right. That's, that's a good so, point. Yeah. And that's the crushing play from Gara. Did you see <laughs> Orange's reaction? Yeah, wow. he that's heartbreaking. It. That is heartbreaking. Glaive Zuka doesn't change a little bit in this situation. And that's, that's actually that's, that's actually really awkward because like the play in this situation usually would be to attack with the weapon that you have, load up the glaive zuka, and then attack with the minion that gets buffed. But if he does that, then the walker just dies to the explosive trap. So we are pretty much stuck here, and Gara is going to throw out the sorry. Hmm. Well, you can kill the um Kazan Mystic. You can revenge kill on the on the minion that's crushed your dreams in these last two games, but. Yeah, we, we, we've gone over this point in the last few games. We were a bit surprised that Gara kept queuing up this deck into into Face Hunter. No, I'm sure he knows and feels that it's a bad matchup under normal conditions. Mm -hmm. What we failed to consider were these are not normal con conditions. He has that yeah. that Kezan Mystic in his deck, possibly, as you pointed out, a double owl as well. Yeah, it's really awesome to see that people are bringing um, those kind of decks with inclusion of, uh, with inclusion, uh, of the cards that are being at tech choices, right? Yeah. It's really awesome to see that. Right. And Orange is uh, desperately searching for a way to stay in this game, but Dark Peddler Lower Theb is about as good as it Kyo. gets. If he doesn't just pick up the lethal. That's 5, 9, 12, 13. And you have the Explosive Trap, right? Yep. But that doesn't really matter. Yeah. I mean, he can just 
ram into the face this turn. He has the power overwhelming for all the damage in the world in the following turn. Like, this game is over. Orange will probably just concede, and he does! Whoa! Whoa. Sarah the wins. last game of the day. Three games to two. Tempo Storm victorious over Archon. Nothing new, Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's about it. That wraps up the, today's matches. Gara advances uh, to the top eight, and he will be playing against Super JG, so against a rogue. And that will be interesting because the Kazan Mystic now will be a dead card right. against the class that will be facing in the next round. It's interesting to see that the choice that he had, and um, in, the, in the in the main deck, right, that he uses that that he uses that yep. he has the the Kazan Mystic. Uh, but we'll see how it, uh, how it pan out against or uh, sorry against Super JJ's Rogue. So after eight matches today, we have the final. Eight for tomorrow because tomorrow we'll have quarterfinals, semifinals, and the grand final. So just to recap the day, um, let's go through. Let's go through the bracket. So first match will be between Zetalot and Statsivka. So Priest versus Warlock and Zetalot advanced uh, in an awesome match. If someone didn't see that, I strongly advise to watch it again from yeah, the VOD. Yeah, that was really awesome. Yeah, that was an awesome match to behold. Then it was Tides versus Colento. Where Tys druided the, his way 3 0 against Colento with his aggro Fell Reaver um, druid. Yep. Then we had Oskaka versus Ikop, where Ikop pulled off uh, a win against the world champion with a Warlock deck. That was basically two times Reno Jackson into a zoo. Yep. Then we have game four between Crane and RDU, Patron Warrior versus Druid, and Patron Warrior emerged victorious from that duel. Uh, five, match five between Life Coach and Elki, so the Poker Stars. Uh, that was a very interesting Druid Mirror match. Uh, that was Life Coach was victorious 3 2 over Elki. And then we had game six between Mark Kennedy, so the new face in our scene, versus AK Wonder. Kind of a interesting game to behold. It was some series of odd choices from both players when it comes to the um, nature of the game, let's say. I yep. guess. And uh, AK Wonder won with his Warlock against Paladin. And that was the only Paladin in the competition. All right. Game 7 was between Super JJ and Howie. And Super JJ pulled over win with the uh, with the Rogue. And then the last game was Orange vs. Garve that we just had. And everyone knows the outcome of that. Yeah, so looking at the lineups that we have now, in terms of classes, there are four Warlocks in the top eight, two Druids, a Rogue, and a Priest makes up our top eight. So no great surprise to me, Lothar, I don't mm -hmm. know about you, that Warlock is our most dominant class just because it is just naturally so flexible and so polarized between the different archetypes that you can play. You know, Zoo and Reno Lock or Handlock are about as far apart as two decks can get in this game, and you just get to play them in the same class powered by the, the same glorious hero power to draw cards. But on top of that, nice to see a little bit of variation. What Some of the unappreciated classes, Priest and Rogue going through. Yeah, on top of that, we've also, we've also seen Hunter, Mage, Paladin, uh so that is what seven classes eight classes is it just shaman that we haven't seen today i think it is right yeah that's it we have seen all classes apart from shaman which kind of tells us that shaman is so one it's like a one let's say like a glass cannon cannon right it only has one strategy for now in current meta game and it doesn't seem to be an option for most of the players that we had today so, but eight classes, kind of cool. I was, I was surprised by the uh, amount of different deck choices that we had today. So, cool to see that the new format might be interesting. It might work. It might require a lot of more more work to put into the rules. But we'll see how sure. that goes. Uh, but I'm really hoping to see interesting matches today, especially with the Zetalot's Priest, because that was an awesome match to behold. Oh, sorry, small correction, actually. I read Crane's Warrior as Warlock again. It's actually only three Warlocks, a Warrior, two Druids, Priest, Rogue. So, okay. so even more variation than we thought going through to top eight. But yeah, as you said, really interesting format. Um, you know, uh, great initiative from, from you guys at G2 to try something new like this. And if you guys have enjoyed watching it or if you have any feedback on 
uh, you know, ideas of how this format can be improved in the future. If we if we end up running another one, then please do contact us. I'm sure you can contact Lothar on Twitter. You can tweet using the hashtag G2CL and share your thoughts that way. Maybe even get shared on stream tomorrow. Um, but yeah. apart from that, unless you have anything else to say, Lothar, I think we're ready to pack it up for the day. That's up. That uh, we're wrapping up the day, and we'll be starting tomorrow the same time, 11 a.m. And we'll have seven matches tomorrow. So don't, don't, don't want to say it doesn't go anywhere because it's a break. No, never mind. <laughs> it's the end of the show today. Have fun. And there will be NA preliminaries in, I think, they already started in like 15 minutes ago. Right. So thank you guys for watching today. It was awesome to have you. See you tomorrow.